Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 25 North Podcast. It's your boy. It's Buzzy Boy in the morning. Fart noise. <laughs> Airport <laughs> airplane. Big bopper in the morning. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's get, 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 get into the details. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did those radio shows still exist? They do. Oh, yeah. They oh, do. no. Why? They're, they're even worse now than they have oh, they used to be. How do they get worse? Awesome. I love listening to them. It's a delight every time. It's like, yes, excellent. Just feed this to me. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a treat for as little radio as I listen to. Um, occasionally, occasionally, it's morning radio on the way into, <laughs> on the way into dropping the kid off at school. You know, sometimes you just need crackhead energy to start the day. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, it's mostly just to get like the weather and shit, like as I'm oh, driving. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. So, we finished chapter five, folks. Yeah. Chapter five is in the books. Chapter five. We start chapter six of 12. Dude, we're halfway there. Once we wrap up chapter six, we have one more there. Oh, man. Crazy. I can officially wear my I survived the chapter of Pathfinder badge. Hey, there you go. (laughs) By the skin of your teeth. Yeah, I was at 4 HP in that last fight. Listen, Timothy was there to help out. Four you HP. know what? That's a, good, uh. that's, a, that's a good banter topic. Let's roll with that. So, how is Pathfinder 2nd Edition treating everybody? I'm fucking loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it too. Let's get a round table. Let's get a round table from... Because we got some, some 2E converts. Or not 2E. Some 5E converts. We have a 1st Edition player we have an ed and d player so like wh- what's everybody feeling so uh let's start with sir jackson oh i'm i'm absolutely adoring pathfinder second edition it feels like it fixed a lot of the problems that i had with fifth edition uh mainly where at a certain point difficulty just doesn't matter anymore in fifth edition and you can just throw whatever you want at your players and they will take it out in three rounds. Um, that is not the case with Pathfinder. Holy shit, that's not the case. <laughs> I've also been loving it from a GM perspective as well, as I've been running some events through a RuneScape-themed uh, Pathfinder campaign, and we've all just been having an absolute blast with this system. Awesome. So yeah, Corey, how how you feeling, brother? Like I know that you you're you bounce back and forth because you have a first yeah. edition game going on, I, right? Uh, there's aspects of second edition I really like. As I've said before, the three action system is bulletproof. Now that I've gotten used to how the class is kind of built out with free archetype and your kind of more limitations and when you can take what feat, without the crazy prerequisite feet trees and requirements now that i've gotten used to that i like it um there's still some things that i definitely miss from first edition such as being able to just go all right i want a magic item that does this let's figure out what the price would be because you can just do that uh, yeah. you have enough gold anything is possible and that led to some interesting flexibility that you could get in your builds and you know your items in particular but yeah, yeah. I, I wonder the- how much I wonder how much of that will change as the system ages, because it, it, I mean it is what what four years old versus yeah it's still fairly new at this versus point versus almost twenty years old or whatever yeah. Well, that's just it. So yeah, I uh, I like both of them. I like the crunch and the crazy meatiness of first edition and just the wild amounts of customization and options. 
That being said, now that I'm playing, uh, I think we're up to level 13 in our uh, Strange Aeons game, I live in constant fear of my character permanently dying because building something new to level 13 in first edition is not an easy thing to do. Or at least not something you can do in less than three or four hours if you're doing something basic. And I don't do basic in first ed, so <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, different stroke. You could just you could just say I don't do basic. Just stop. <laughs> That's fair. True. That's fair. <laughs> I, I like to get weird. I'm a barbarian who doesn't rage. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised you didn't rage that last fight. Nah. Almost. Almost got there. <laughs> yeah, it was getting close. But then I started hitting again. <laughs> I was going to say, get, get, getting downed and wounded three, or wounded two, dying three, you know. Not quite there. Almost there. Not quite there. Could be a rage. <laughs> it it, it, it would have taken an action to rage. <laughs> uh, Lunar, how are you feeling? I, I'm still trying to get used to the system. At like, it, I'm still so used to 5e, right? It's like some things click, some things don't sometimes. But all that all being said, I really do adore the system a lot, and I really like the spells and like the action. The action, uh, the three actions, is really good. I really like that. I like how many, like, I guess, classes and things you have to work with. It really is just like, <laughs> it's like Pathfinder gave you a character and said, all right, what do you want to build and have fun? Just like let, like, let loose, really. And I really like that because it, Pathfinder, from what I've seen and from the classes that I've gotten to look at uh, on my own side as a in case Timothy dies kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some things I really want to try out and I I really like the system a lot. Just all into a nice little bow. Yeah, do you want do you want to play steampunk? Here's here's an inventor. Yeah. Do you, I think there was one where it was like, do you want to play someone who just got teleported from the real world and is now in uh Pathfinder? Yeah, yeah here you go. Yeah, that's uh the other worlders, yeah, that's yeah. the isekai. Yes, I looked at that one and I was like, "Oh, that's a maybe. That's a maybe right there." <laughs> oh yeah. And Rachel, I know that. Well, we we've been playing Second Edition for a long time now since it came out, but still. Yeah. You know, one thing I do like about Second Edition isn't necessarily about the system itself, but all of the support tools, like the path builder to build your characters and the archives that you could just, and the the thing you showed me, the combat builder. I like that I can just look up a rule and have the answer right there, which again, isn't about the system, I guess, so much as the community surrounding the system. Yeah. But yeah, I like the system. I, you know, it's obviously very, very different from first edition D and D, but yeah. No, I mean I think that's important though the the fact that the it's, it is so community supported and community centric, and Paizo really embraces that. They embrace the community. They say, "Hey, sure, you you need access to this to help it. Have at it. Just you know, take it and." run with it and it is so community driven you're absolutely right like for example the 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 developers of the video game for kingmaker they went when paizo went and remastered their the adventure path for that video game so kingmakers a was a first edition adventure path Owlcat, the video game developers went and made a, C, a, a computer rpg for kingmaker Ooh. And then um, it came out like last year or, or no, it came out a few years ago. And then when Paizo was like, okay, yeah, we're going to take Kingmaker. We're going to update it to second edition. And then, but like Owlcat added a couple side quests that were really cool. So they're like, can we use those? And they're like, and the the, the video game developer, Alcat, was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. 
And then when they went and took it and implemented it into Foundry, Owlcat's been like, hey, do you want access to this music that we developed for the video game and you could just use it in Foundry? Oh. Just take it. Well, so they legitimately have the music from the video game in the Foundry modules. That's sweet. It's so cool. Like, it's such a cool, like, real relationship between the community and the developers. It's, I think it's really neat. Yeah, and obviously all the supplemental stuff we have from Battlezoo. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the ancestries and, yeah, monster parts. Yeah, and uh, the uh, couple archetypes, but I don't think any of us are using them. But some of the archetypes are really cool. Mm -hmm. I thank Battle Zoo for letting me play a dragon. Yeah. I thank Battle Zoo and everybody, because, oh my gosh, your stuff's crazy, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, you're just preemptively thanking Battle Zoo for letting you play a an Eldamon trainer. Yeah. Just, yeah, just to Abdu preempt that. Preemptive, like... If Timothy, like, I don't want him to die. I really like Timothy a lot. Like, I was talking with Rachel about Timothy before we started recording. Yeah. But. But. Things happen. Yeah, Poe, but he's nerfed. Sometimes people got to go to Beef City and just die. <laughs> yeah, so last time you all fought off the rope golem, got back to town, were celebrated as heroes for for dealing with Seaview's ghost issues and fixing that, and of course, uh, securing trade so, uh, the trade route with the Bluebell Crop and Gold Crop Island. And of course, Prince Kalupi took all the credit because he's an asshat and that's what he does. Mm -hmm. um, y'all participated in a, well, I shouldn't say y'all. Everybody but still participated in a parade and were celebrated and had a giant feast. Uh, there were speeches thrown about. Uh, there were, you know, people were chatting up. And at the very end, Gruppel thanked the party by giving the party some uh, briar thorns. And we make it back onto the ship. And everybody's now level five. And Hey, 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 hey. So before we shove off and set sail for, do you remember what island we're headed to next? Moon Shadow Island. Hey, there we go. Good job, Jackson. Frantically looks at Matt. <laughs> Moon Shadow. Yep, you're headed back to Moon Shadow Island. That's the one that prompted. Uh -huh. Proc to hook you up, hooked you up with some of that information in the cold open. Hi. Hint, hint, hint yes. if you didn't listen to that. I did. Yeah, so before we do that, let's do a quick roundtable what level five looks like for everybody. So who wants to start us off? I can. All right, go for it. Yeah, so for level five, uh, ability boosts I chose were uh, strength, wisdom to get that one up to 19 charisma to get myself another healing spell in my divine font and dexterity to bring up my armor class uh, to 22 instead of 21. I also got an expert proficiency in perception because of alertness and expert proficiency in religion and then I also took the draconic pride ancestry feat so I can try and lower my frightened condition by one or uh, have everything go crash down upon me because uh, Vesuviac's pride is very damaged and can be easily exploited. Nah. <laughs> 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 I also got some third level spells. I got fireball. Nobody's <laughs> safe. <laughs> oh, no, the can. Uh, being the frontliner, uh, following the person who just gained fireball. It's always a little bit scary. But, yeah, Zaba's level 5. You know, it was standard stuff. You know, increased amounts of just bloodshed in general. So my skill increase, I took in survival. He's a survivor. Ability boost, pretty much all the things that make you better at killing things. Strength, con, wisdom, dexterity. 
gained access at fifth level to brutality. So now I'm a I'm an expert in you know simple martial and unarmed weapons, and weapon critical specializations are uh, now a thing. So that's a lot of fun. And then I took Indomitable Rene Renegade as my feat. So if I'm confused or controlled, I can make a roll against it and just be paralyzed instead. So that's a lot of fun. Let's see. So got better at traps because they did not like accidentally hurting themselves on that scimitar. So expert in thievery now and wary disarmament so that they have a plus two when trying to disarm traps as well as noble resolve. So bonus to will saves. Cool. And... I guess it seems very similar to Weapon Brutality, except it's called Weapon Tricks for Thieves, so better at weapons. Sick. All right, well, with Timothy, he got a new third level spell. Very exciting. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, because it's definitely going to get revealed at some point in time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was able to get one of my ancestry feats, and I went with clever improviser, which is gonna just make Timothy's lip a whole lot better. Skill increase. I... Oh god, what was it? I increased my performance check because I need my... I need my silly man to be a better rizzer. <laughs> to have better riz. And he also got his dex, con, wisdom, and charisma all raised up thanks to... Uh, the attribute boost. Yeah. That's Timothy. That's Animus. <laughs> nice. Nice. There's also some, like, extra stuff with Animus, but I'm not gonna tell y'all that. You're gonna find out later. It's fine. <laughs> so, we are sailing for Moonshadow Island. So, let's go ahead and shove off shall we let's shove let's shove yeah. off as we set sail for good old moonshadow does zaba know any particulars about moonshadow yeah so the trip to moonshadow here it's going to take about three days so you all are able to take take partake in downtime however you wish yeah, we can go ahead and you might know something about the island's reputation. So you can attempt one of one of three different checks. Let me throw those into the chat. So you can do a nature check, a religion check, or wait, is this one oh. broken? Oh. Society check. There you go. Or if somebody has Indigo Isles Geography, you can go ahead so and choose that. Maybe sailing due to my background, my sneaky little no, background. No, not about the island proper. Fair enough. No, this would be a secret role, right? Yeah, if you click on the if you click on those those links, still should that should automatically make it secret. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm rolling it as well. God, I have a plus 13 to my religion now. Holy crap. Sorry, I had to make sure about something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the expert proficiency. I think that rolled right, but... You rolled nature, yeah. I did. Okay. I was going to make sure. Anybody else rolling anything? No. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. Praxis told me what I need to know. Yeah, it's fair. Zaba? Oh, yeah, you're making it right now. Yeah, I guess I'll throw my hat in the ring. He's okay. not going to tell any of the information to anyone else, though. Wow. That's okay, right. so who are we starting off with? We're, we're going to start off with Vesuviak. Vesuviak, you made a religion check? Yep. So what you would know is that the island itself are... Um, there's a lot of spectral undead particularly angry spirits that haunt Moonshadow Isle. You know, so things like 
wraiths and specters. But furthermore, you also know that many undead creatures arise due to violent deaths. The undead of Moonshadow, they tend to arise from tragedies? There's so many people that die in messy and violent ways on this island that angry spirits aren't uncommon. So it's important to consider how much how such spirits arose and then work to put them to rest permanently to quell their pain and keep them from returning. Okay. Uh, uh, that I would definitely let the the crew know that we should expect to fight undead and, like, spectral undead. Oh, boy. Fortunate. Zaba, you... You've heard... You know, you've sailed on boats, on ships, a lot of them throughout throughout the centuries of your existence, and you've heard rumors in the past, and one of the rumors that you've heard, and now you can't confirm any of this, you don't know f for certain, it's just a rumor that you've heard, but you heard that anybody who eats the wrong piece of fruit, of food that's been grown on Moonshadow is cursed to a painful death at the next moonrise. Cool. Zaba spends the next three days stealing food for his personal stockpile. Oh, wow. And Timothy, you rolled nature. I did. So you would know that, so Moonshadow Island is known to have dense forests. And they're, the trees here are so tall that they cover the ground in perpetual shadow. And that creatures lurk in darkness, tend to find comfortable homes on Moonshadow Island, which is one of the reasons other creatures consider it so dangerous. Now, that being said, plant creatures of several types do inhabit the island mostly because they can they can find safety from civilization because of that very reason. Gotcha. Because everybody thinks it's so dangerous and it's because they people think that creatures the nocturnal creatures are scary. Yeah. They think people think no nocturnal creatures are scary so they avoid it and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Timothy already has dark vision. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. It's not yet for Tim. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll uh, I'll just depend on my teammates and hope they're not lying to me. <laughs> the safe neck would never lie. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it's against his God's will. Otherwise, he would. <laughs> totally. Uh, yeah. Timothy lets uh, the party know about his information that he knows about tall trees. Very spooky. We'll be home to some things that don't necessarily want to be around humans and things like that. And stuff like that. Just fill in, just fill in what he knows. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. And you're also able to go ahead if you wanted to start learning more about the island. You do have the opportunity to gather information from the crew. Hmm. If you wanted, you could also, well, I think that's the only other thing that you <laughs> about learning about Moonshadow. But for downtime, there's also the ability to do the gathering resources from the sea. Yeah. If you wanted to do that. Uh, yeah. Which skills did we use for that? I don't remember. Was it at strength? I mean, there's a lot of choices. So, seek marine resources is a downtime activity. Mm hmm. Actually, let me go ahead and see if I can. If they ha added it in this module. They did it. No. No, they didn't. Dang. All right. All right. So, 
You can use either athletics, crafting, nature, or survival, or sailing lore. You know, I'm pretty good at pretty much all of that stuff, as always. So, uh, you want me to just, you know, go for a swim? That'd be great. I can help you out. You can, uh, breathe underwater? No, but I can swim. All right. You can, uh, stick close to the surface. So, So each character who wants to participate has to make a single check. Okay. So there's no aid. Gotcha. Uh, I will make a nature check because nature's good for me. Okay. Uh, nature check. Bada big. Bada boom. I should have made it private. Sorry. No, no, no. no. Actually, you can do this one public. That's fine. Oh, okay, cool. I got a 25, kids. Look at me go. Hey. Anybody else rolling? Yep. Yeah, I'll roll. Sell, sell did a sailing lore. Saba did an athletics. Vesuviac did a survival. I was second bet. <laughs> all right, and guess what, folks? Yeah. Those are all four successes. Yeah. <laughs> so as for Navia scavengers, yes. as the four of you are participating in this. Um, the crew are all, you know, they're giving you advice like Slate is. It's like, oh, no, no, that's not how you do it. You you got to pull up. But no, no, that's not. Oh, t- no, pull with your legs. Your legs. <laughs> and, and then, you know, the Garnicor is just looking at Zaba. It's like, yep, mm-hmm. No, you missed it. It's over. It's over there. Yes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There. You got it. You got it. Just you know, cheering you on. Lots of thumbs up and finger guns from just under the water. Just hands sticking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's four resources. <laughs> that's four resources. The total number of kelp points that a character earns determines the resources they acquire on that leg of the trip. So, you get netweed and twine kelp again. Another netweed and another twine kelp. Wow. Hell yeah. Look at us go, gang. We're thriving out here on the seas, not doing so good in the towns. That's fine. Did what we needed to. Yeah. I still think we could take the council. Well, I... I rather take the cancel just at this second. Maybe later we'll upstage a coup or some shit like that. Yeah, same. So what are y'all, what are y'all doing for um, after after you gathered the resources and chilled out for a bit? Hmm. I think Vesuviac would go to the med bay to see if there's anybody that needs any medical attention. Go, going to the med bay? Yeah. Okay, so you get to the med bay, and you you get you run into Sam Blaine, the the Gamayan doctor. Oh yeah, oh. the extraordinarily handsome one. Hot I think doctor. I, I do have right here. The hot doctor. There he is. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> he is a beautiful man. Look at him. He's a beautiful yeah, man. Nice Look at him. All Gamayans have rainbow eyes. Is That's what. Yeah. He's got see. his feathers slicked back. Yes. We can't trust him. Can't trust them. So he just turns. He is like, boy, hey, what can I do for you? Uh, just checking to see if anybody's in need of healing. I bet you are. Uh, you know, I could, um... You need me to check up on you? I'm fine. I'm... Yeah, you certainly are fine. Are there any patients that are in need of attention? <laughs> like, Vesuviac is just... Uh, well, you he know... He sees this approach and he's just stonewall. 
I did not well, expect you know, an episode. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a patient, but I'm always in need of some attention. I did not expect an episode of Grey's Anatomy to show up <laughs> in this podcast. <laughs> My doctor travel, let's go. The Suvac just nods and goes, well, uh, hope we can find somebody to help you with that. He just turns around and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like I did not expect this today. <laughs> <sighs> Hate to see you go, but I love to watch you walk away. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is the angle doesn't even know how to respond to that. He just keeps walking and I guess yeah. he's just gonna go up to like the highest part of the ship that he can get to without being yelled at, just scan the seas. <laughs> All right, and anybody else? Yeah, Sil's so gonna bring Timothy that fantasy Tupperware back. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. The heart of bag. Heart of bag. Yeah, the heart of bag. That fantasy Tupperware. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the food. It was weird. Yeah, it was. Re- Did you have the sandwiches, by the way? I didn't eat it. Honestly, you're better off. It just, they had really bad pickles in yeah, it. I left it at Saba's store. I figured he'd eat it. But, you know, it was a nice thought. Was that your thought or, you know, like, was, yeah, that, no, that was thought? Like, you, you, though? Leafling, Leafling the blood mouse prowl. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I I had the idea since I felt bad. You, you didn't really get to experience the food. And I was like, why not? You know? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was nice. I can tell you got really overwhelmed and you probably didn't want to be around people. Oh, well, people are fine, but you know, we, that amount of people no. probably keep a low profile uh, in general, you know. It, unfortunately, to have me on this crew, it's going to be kind of hard, especially with Zaba. I don't think we're going to be able to keep a low profile like ever again. That's true. That's true. By the way, are you in control when those other guys are out? It's kind of important to know. Well, not necessarily. I've been trying to figure out how to gain control. And Timothy looks a little bit more nervous now that this has been brought up. And he just like rubs like the back of his neck kind of sheepishly. He's like, uh, the awful thing is before this all happened, actually, before I found out, you know, who I actually was kind of stuff. The Dark Star would possess me. I'd straight up not have any memory of what happened during his time when he possessed me. So, new side effect, I actually know what's going on. Sure. Which is great. Uh, it's not cool to be a prisoner in your own body when things possess you. No. Because I can see what's happening and experience what's happening, which is also not great at <laughs> some points. Yeah, that sounds not good at all. No, not at all. Funny enough, I like Timothy looks a little bit around. It's like, I, I think I told you that's the reason why I ended up in the Isles in the first place. Darks are fucking possessed me, uh, brought me here for whatever reason, and I have not been able to get home since. Oh, maybe. Uh, and you've tried getting rid of him. I've tried everything. I've talked to as many people are willing to listen that I trust with that secret. And I trust with them knowing this information. Yeah, no, (laughs) no fucking dice. You think of 41 years of experiencing this shit, I'd be better at it, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I mean, like I said, I can write practice if you don't mind. I. Hey, anything at this point will help. Hell, I'll, I'll take I'll take anything. I don't think they're gonna be able to help though. She's really smart, like really smart. She told me about you know this island we're going to and the like where we should bring the boat. Oh, oh hell yeah! Okay, yeah, I'm sure she can help you. All right, yeah, I'll I mean I'll take my chances. Is that a puppy or a cat underneath the blanket behind you, Lunar? Yeah. No, 
that's a plushie. These are all plushies next no, to me. No, I see it bouncing up and down. What the fuck are you on about? I also see it might be like a plastic bag catching wind current and going. Plastic down. bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I get where you're seeing. I, it looks like Daddy, like you can move. I thought it was like a cat underneath a blanket. I don't have a cat. I'm allergic to cats. I didn't. I didn't know. More you know. No. That's the Forbidden Loader lore. You don't get another one of those till 17 more episodes or so. <laughs> Once every 18 episodes, we get Once the new Once every 18 episodes, okay. you get some okay. new lore. I got no animals in this room. They would be disruptive. Sorry, I just... I, 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 I was fixating on it and I had to ask. That's fair. I have candies and like stuff in that bag, and the bag is just perfectly open to the point where it's just moving. I guess because it's hot as hell in my room. You're good. Anyway, I interrupted. Sorry. <laughs> You're okay. God, where was I at with Timothy stuff? Yeah, Timothy just like just kind of. I think he like leans back on the wall and talking about this stuff just makes him start actually taking a little bit of his uh whiskey. You know that uh, whiskey is really not helping. <laughs> I mean, you can drink if you want to. I don't really care. It just probably isn't helping. Well, here's the problem. It kind of does. Nullifies how strong the thing is with me. Oh. Okay. Well, we should find you more booze, then. Oh, hey, why do you think I was so excited about Old Woody? Yeah, you might not want to let Saba know how excited you were. I know that was a bad idea, but honestly, I didn't give a shit really at that moment in time. I was at a very low point. Fair enough. H how are you doing, by the way, actually? You've asked a lot of questions about me. What about you? Are you holding up okay? Yeah, we've got two gems. We just need, what, a few more? No, 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 I'm not talking about the Avenger. I mean you, actually. Oh, I'm fine. I mean, I didn't eat the food, so I'm not sick like you. Okay. I don't mean about the food. I mean, actually, just you as a person. Are you okay? People probably don't ask you that enough. They're probably asking a lot of big, important questions out of you. I just mean, are you doing okay? That's super sweet of you, Timothy. I'm doing great. I think people ask me just about the right amount. I still just got to make sure. All right. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, you're very sweet. It's nice that you take care of us all. Kind of in my nature, too. <laughs> he actually, at this moment in time, he takes out, like, his, like, his wallet, and you see very well that it looks like a dad wallet. Uh, and he shows, he shows, like, a, like, a, like, a picture of uh, a tiefling. And he's like, that's my kid. Yeah, her name's Cassandra. <laughs> uh, Cass, for short. She's my... She's uh, my little spellcaster. How old does she look? She's six. Okay. Cool. Very, very young. Very full of life in the picture. And you see, like, he has, you know, like, the embarrassing thing dads have where they have multiple pictures of their daughters and stuff like that and, like, different poses? Yeah, he just, he looks to you and he, like, smiles like, she's actually the reason why I want to get off these godforsaken islands. <laughs> I miss her and my mom. Well, I've got, I mean, so Sil's gonna start digging in the bag. I've got, like, we double check what Sil has. And at this point, you all start hearing, this is mutiny. This is seditious and humiliating mutiny. Oh, shit. Getting yelled through the, throughout the entire ship. Oh, uh, here, take this a, pinwheel. This I gotta go. Oh. I'll go with you. Timothy just starts going. And you all hear the prince. Where is that bloody godforsaken mouse? Can we help you? This, this will not be, st this, I cannot stand. No, this is uncalled for. This is. Hey, prince, can you use I call, fucking words? I call for execution. Where is that, what do you call it, leafling? That leafling, that blood mouse. Fucking, like, calm down. Did I just calm hear the prince ask to be executed? I am here, I am ready. That's so not what's happening yet, Zaba. 
ever. Oh, okay. That's never happening. He, probably. Good clarification. Clarification. Hey, what happened? This, this will, this will not stand. And he just turns around and slams his cabin door shut. Oh, you don't find it. it. And Man. slams the door shut. I really hate that oh, guy. What? You didn't use your words like a big boy. Oh, he's after the blood mouse. I heard him say leafling. Why? I think Vesuviac just kind of watched. I probably all made this. a joke about him he didn't like. Probably. And at that, at that, the the twins, um, Slate and Hoda. Hoda's the one that speaks, and um, Slate's the other one. And uh, no, no, sorry, uh, Flippin and Mippin. The the they're the twins. Sorry. Flippin' and Mip- Mippin are the two twins, and um, they're like, oh, yeah, that's the, um, <laughs> do you, you want to tell, oh, no, you, you, you can go ahead, you can go ahead and tell, this is, I don't want to take it for you, no, 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 you should, go. no, you, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I got it, <laughs> so apparently, um, apparently Leafling uh, got into the prince's underwear, done car, <laughs> and shredded some of his underwear. <laughs> yeah, apparently the prince didn't take too good that. And well, considering that how did he put it? Oh, I think he said it was uh, uh s- s- seditious mutiny. But well, yeah, sed- uh, yeah, uh, seditious and humiliating mutiny. <laughs> it's so wait, I'm if I'm understanding this correctly. The fucking prince is so up his own ass that he is mad that a thing destroyed his underwear. A creature destroyed his underwear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I bet the prince destroyed his own underwear. He farted too Birds. hard. He ripped it. Birds aren't exactly infamous for their, you know, outstanding bowel control. Just saying. I, I don't know how this world works. I. I just like when things are kind of fucked up. What, what's the word, though, Capitano? Are we uh, I don't think hunting the blood mouse for execution, or are we just going to let this all kind of cool over? It's all uh, well, I think I think one of you needs to talk to the prince, because he needs to get, that, get over it. I can talk to him if you want me to. Yeah, go for it. And I, I don't know he can kill a blood mouse, so I think we're all, you know, safe. Yeah, well, but you can talk to him. I don't know, man. I'll talk to him. Go for it. Oh, God. Oh, no, I, I don't want to talk to this fucking prince guy. All right, Timothy just, like, straightens up a little bit, uh, fixes up his jacket, just look as proper as he can, knocks on the door and is like, can I come in? Do you have the mouse? No, but can we talk like adults? Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Timothy opens up the door and... Walks on in. And you just see the prince sharpening a dagger. Okay. The Where prince is- Zaba sharpening his bastard sword from outside. <laughs> and Timothy's like, where's your diplomacy? Aren't you a prince? You know, I I told the crew to get rid of that fucking thing before we set sail. You mean the thing that's helping them keep, you know, their morale up so they don't try to revolt? The, I'm giving them money. That's- money is okay. Look, and like Timothy, like sits, like not sits down, but like looks and was like, look, money's one thing. Money's a great factor for a lot of people. No, I mean for you. If people start losing their sanity, they'll turn, and they'll go after the person that makes the most boisterous affairs and stuff like that. And he points to him, my dear prince, you are really making an ass of yourself out there. No offense, but you may want to tone it down just well, for your own safety. Roll a diplomacy check real quick. Yeah. The diplomacy. Where is my diplomacy? Sit. Let me roll that. I think you have a fairly good one. Aw. Uh-huh. Okay, well, that's a three do, on the die. Do do I use a hero point on that one? Because I feel like that might be really important to do that. Yeah, we can just intercede if you fuck up. No, I'm gonna use a hero point. 
I have, listen, have I've got two. three of them. Or like not three of them. I have two. So I have this will be my last one I'll have left. That's an eighteen instead. I'll take an eighteen. Okay. Oh. And the the prince goes. You might have a point. Alright. That's fine. Well <clears throat> if you want it, look, hey, like Timothy like leans in a little bit more just so that way in case someone's over here, he's like, Look, if you want some underwear, I do have underwear. You can just It's not some. the it's not the underwear. It's the fact that I asked the crew to get rid of it before we left. And again, and they needed it. It's to help them out. Look, imagine this. And like Timothy, like it takes like it has like an arm over his shoulder, and it's like, look, imagine this. We're out in sea, and it's been like five or six days, and maybe food's a little low, and people are starting to get a little grouchy, a little angry. And let's say for whatever reason, you have one of those outbursts again. Are they gonna favor the funny little the funny little mouse that has been keeping them happy, or are they gonna favor the prince who just decided to yell at their entire crew? I think they'd favor the funny mouse more than the person who yelled at all of them when they're at their lowest point. I'm just saying you may want to think about how you're acting around these people and maybe stop treating them like they're lower than you. Just a thought. Fine. I've been around a lot of people that are very royal and very up their own ass. It's not always good for them in the long run. Fine, but keep, keep that bloody thing out of my quarters. I will try my best, but it's also an animal. So maybe get it, like, cut it some fucking slack, my man. Besides, you can buy underwear and buy other things and take care of yourself later. You're a goddamn prince. You've got money. Just saying. He wants And he's, and he's like, fine, fine. And, um, and he's, and he's, it's like, he's done. He's like, yeah. Timothy offers him up some of his uh, rums. Like, do you want some? No. All right. Fair enough. And Timothy straightens out his jacket and once again gives a flurious bow to the prince and's like, have a good rest of your day, sir. And leaves and looks at the party. It's like, and he's cool. He's all good. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to. Can I hear that and frown from his perch but not say anything? He's just like, I, I witnessed that entire thing go off. I, I'm now keeping an eye on the prince. <laughs> yeah. Timothy, like, looks like... <laughs> just like to him. Nah, he'll be fine. He's gonna act a lot nicer. I've persuaded him on that. That's good. Good job. Yeah, thanks. I've been around enough dickheads to talk them out of being less of a dickhead. <laughs> it's an important <laughs> skill. It's a really important skill, actually. All right. Well, after a couple more days, in, in totality, totality, it's been about four days. After a couple days, you come across the shore of that narrow bay that mm-hmm. Procta was telling you about. And it gives way to an almost immediate dense strands of sprouted trees that grow hundreds of feet high, just like just like Timothy said. Mm-hmm. And it cloaks the cloaks the forest in perpetual shadow. You can see here as you're approaching that the island has several tall hills. And Any smaller hill is likely concealed by these really tall trees in this forest. The island itself looks dim, damn near inhospitable, and almost completely abandoned, except for a dilapidated shack on a beach on the shore just above the tide line. And as you approach, the crew the crew is like, oh, okay, just, we want nothing to do with this island. So we're going to hang back. If you guys want to roll the dinghy out, we're going to anchor the ship over here. 
That's fair. Yeah, just keep an eye out. Bring you back something special to eat. <laughs> That's nice of you, Zaba. Why did that sound That's... so sinister? Zaba, why did that sound so sinister? As <laughs> Zaba's rucksack is yeah. full of full of breads and cheeses. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what you mean. I'm just trying to be a nice guy. You brought back food for sale. I thought that's what people did. No, it is. It is. It just, you had an energy about it, my man. Nobody questioned seem... you when you did it. It was just like, oh, that's very sweet of you. But when I do it, it's sinister. I think it you're was just... racist. <laughs> I'm fucking sorry. It's okay. No, I'm going to do... you. This has nothing to do with the race. This has the way you said your tone. Oh, now it's about the way that I talk. Oh my fucking god. Vesuviac just puts a claw on Timothy's back and is like, just don't. You're okay, not gonna I'm win not, this one. I'm not, I'm not. No, you know what? And Timothy just no, but might be feeling a little feisty after being trapped on the boat for three days. You got to go swimming. You did get to go swimming. Was a nice swim and you know, I, uh, I scraped some of those barnacles off the bottom, so now we should get a good, like, half a knot feather, you know, Thank mileage. You. It's great. And just as you about to board the dinghy, Prince Kalupi rushes out and says, okay, hey, just, just one moment here. And, um, and he kind of just makes a big show. Well... If you're going to be the ones that go out there and brave the island, then I would join you if I, you know, but I, somebody has to be here to You're in to just guard the ship. Spot. Yep. Yeah, no, of and, course. Hey, I, well, no, maybe you should come out and get his feathers wet, learn the ropes a little bit. The bosun is more than capable of safeguarding the ship. You know, she is... Well, she, she, has, she has some tasks to do. But regardless, here, and he pulls out... It looks like just kind of a tattered sack, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Here," and he pr- and he holds it up for so the entire crew can see it. This is a great, great treasure, and may it help you on your adventure here on the island. And he hands it to the party, hands it to you. You know, Zappa already has a sack, but this is, I'm sure you'd like another one. <laughs> hey. I like bags to bring food back for, you know, the prince man. I'll say Vesuviac grabs it. Okay. Um, are you doing anything with it? Do you want to open it up? Yeah, I've got, got to look inside and see what it is. Yeah, Timothy wants to peer over. Because he's nosy. He's got nosy bitch syndrome. Yeah, you, you take a look inside. And it's a sack. <laughs> are you... But it is giving off some magical energies. Timothy, maybe you could fit in that one too. Uh, probably. Can I try and identify it? <laughs> yeah, let me, hold on one second here. Let me. I can't I, finish the joke I was about to say. I was like, I like getting the tight places. <laughs> we can finish off. I can. And I did. It just took me as like, <laughs> like I couldn't. <laughs> Not my first take of it. Uh, okay, here, let me quick, there we go, and let me, where is, how, how did I do it, there, there you go, religion, religion, oh yeah, that's a success, oh hell yeah, this is a bag of holding type 2, Ooh. oh this what? fucker wasn't kidding, this is a Did great treasure, hold- Hell yeah. Safe. Did the Suvriac have a chance to look at that second gem? Oh, yeah, yeah. You you, you pl- had plenty of time to identify it. Oh, yeah. Could I give that a shot? Oh, and y- you identified the pastries too, right? Oh, yeah. That's One of us did for sure. So they basically function as serene mutagens? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I did tell you that. We had the yes. pastries. Pastries for sure. The you knew the pastries, that's right. The rock, not so much. The rock's in my inventory. <laughs> All right. Here, so let me... Or, it's, all, it's, in, it's in your inventory. Let me do it here. And I can identify that for you. Identify. 
I'm also Aquamarine not. Wedge. That's right. I think we I think we brought this up at one point because I said that that's my birthstone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, I got to hand off the bag folding to whoever's the the pack mule. <laughs> it basically when you affix it to we either when you wear it around your neck or you affix it to armor, it allows you to breathe uh, water. Oh, wait, the stone, the the aquamarine aquamarine wedge. So what the the second piece of the indigo isle, the jewel of the indigo isle. Okay. That's so useful. Yeah. So the first one lets you cast Earthbind or Ghostly Weapon as an innate spell once per day. And then the second one lets you um, breathe underwater. What happens if I try and use both together? <laughs> they kiss. <laughs> the stones kiss. <laughs> and a new stone is born. Just, uh, just push then we don't have to go to the other island. Oh, you see, there you go. <laughs> we can just breed ourselves a whole collection. <laughs> like it's a fucking Pokemon. Leave it out and take it to the nursery. Come back 30 minutes later, a bunch of new stones have been created. All right, we need a rock and a slime to make another rock. <laughs> All right, so who's keeping the bag of holding? I think the safety act took it, right? Oh, did you pass I, it I off? I took it, but I'm offering it to whoever wants it. Uh, Zalvo won't say no to taking it. I don't know if I large, do it. Large storage spaces to fill with weapons and other Tim, things. Timothy's willing to take it too, if, if you want. Yeah, we can rock paper scissors. We can rock paper scissors. I, I think the Subiac's just gonna wear it. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna take it. There you go. You know that's fair. Well, it weighs what one bowl? Yeah. A living creature placed inside the bag has enough air to, for ten minutes before it begins to suffocate. They can attempt an escape check against a DC-13. Right, good to know if we need to pull any It's a lot better for storing corpses. We're storing a Timothy and then come back out <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Your corpse. Just pull an escape rope on the end of it. Yeah, I just want to see what it, what, bag of, what the type 2 means. 50 I was about to ask that. Or 50 yeah. bolt. You don't want to put a bloody in there and rip it up. Yeah, t oh, oh, type two is 50 bulk? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was the size of the mouth of the bag, if, it, if that changed they, no, I based think, off type. I think, the, I think they still have, like, the monster or the giant bags in specific for rock throwing, if I remember correct. I'd have to look into it further. Yeah. And I know back in... Back in the A, B, and B days, you, you didn't want to put anything sharp in a bag of holding because you could rupture it. Now we have a cool way to decapitate somebody if we just put the bag of holding on top of their head and break it open. Uh, yeah, I don't believe that collapses them. I believe it's just other interdimensional spaces within bags of holding are the no no. I can't put a bag of holding in a bag of holding. We can't oh, nest. No them. God! In first edition, you, you, you in first edition AD and D, you sure couldn't. In first cool edition, way. Pathfinder, you sure couldn't either. It was essentially like making a nuclear bomb. Yep, <laughs> that's how it was in, in first edition AD&D. Listen, what it's called is the last resort to kill the BBEG. Yeah. You just put a bag of holding inside a statue and you play basketball and you copy that statue inside the other bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> you died, but you at, least, at least you look cool doing it. <laughs> Kobe. First. <laughs> All right, so you you dinging out to that to that shoreline? Yes. Yeah, we dinging. All right, let me. Did I pull up the map for you yet? No, I didn't. Did we I? have the full map. All right, let me pull that map open for you. Are you scared? I'm so spooky. Scary. There's a hut. Huh? Not a hut. Hey, you, hut. You actually see it? You can only I see, see the hut. This. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, never mind. I see the hut. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just standing there. The lone roof in the void. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, yeah. You guys can hit, hit the rest button and get rid of all your conditions and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a thing. I'm well rested. Wake alert enthusiast. 
I gotta reprep my spells real quick. Yeah, get your focus points and do all that jazz. All that jazz. Yeah, I'm gonna prep all my focus spells and do some of my rituals. Good plan. Because I also realized I get breathe fire now. Oh, nice. You can breathe fire? That's I've crazy. had access to breathe fire this whole time. I just didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, you've never just, you just never used it. Yeah. But I feel like it's a little bit better to use over Admonish Gray. <laughs> no. What? You mean a spell that can't kill someone? Vesuviac doesn't need that. Crazy. Oh, you took the spell breathe fire, not the draconic ability breathe fire. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, originally burning hands, but that got caught in the uh, 2E name change. Oh, yeah. The remaster yeah. main name change stuff. Okay, I thought you were talking about the dragon ability breathe. To breathe. No, no, sorry. The Because uh, that's, a, that, that's a feat you can take as well. It is, and I've considered it, but uh, I think it's still really funny that Vesuviac can't breathe fire or use any of his, like, classic draconic abilities That's as a part of this punishment. All right. All right. So you make it to the shore of this, uh, of Moonshadow Island. And, like, again, like I see, it's the only thing you see is the dilapidated hut. Okay. The shack on a beach is in terrible repair. The door is long gone. The roof has collapsed. It's plainly filled with all sorts of sand and debris. Yeah. Oh, boy. Did the map we found lead us to a specific spot on this island or just this island in general? Oh, yeah, yeah. The If you remember, Proctus said that it's this actually shouldn't be too far in from this this bay. Oh, I could not remember. It's been a couple weeks since I listened. That's fair. Just to clarify, is this down here blood, or is that map, that's just map flare? Yeah, that's just a map flare. Okay, because you can that's see just... like the over here. There's the north sign. Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure. <laughs> Timothy like looks to y'all is like, do we want to see about heading to the creepy hut or? I mean, is there any reason to? We can just go find the thing. Well, there we could need. be something. I mean, there could be something there that we might need, like more information. Yeah, if you want, if whoever's taking a peek at that hut, you can make me that perception check. I kind of want to peek. I'm a little nosy. It's in my nature to be nosy. I'm a human. I got to peek as well. I peep. All right. All right. Well, Timothy or Vesuviak, you don't see anything. But That's- Timothy, you notice. You detect some subtle, very subtle movements coming from the roof of the, this of the hut, almost as if the roof isn't all that it seems. It almost seems like it's insectile of some sort. Well, Timothy points this out and like points to the roof. It's like, hey, the roof look weird to y'all too. And like, hopefully, points out like it looks like very buggy, very insectile, as I've been told. Yeah, no, sometimes roofs just have bugs in them. No, that's. I mean, maybe unless it's for this isle, oh. or at least this island. I wasn't supposed to do that yet. Oh, <laughs> hit uh, just a little. Uh, Suviak, do you sense any magic over there? I, I don't see anything. I yeah, I can have and uh, check the roof. Magic crap. I. Do you want me to just uh, go over and see what's going on, Sil, or do we just want to go in the forest? I mean, it'd probably be bad if something was behind us. If it's. That's what I'm worried about. So we. Should All right. Check it out. I, I guess. will go take a peek. All right. I'll... And we're gonna pause. Oh. Because at this point, the roof disappears as. A creature goes up in its place. What the fuck? And I will reveal to you. Ew! Oh. Is it called a tile centipede? A tile no. no. What? 
this creature starts to it reveals itself as soon as Zaba approaches and it just and it yeah you can just describe it for our listeners before we call it an episode it's like a so getter you have like a an art deco like predator but instead it's got four little spiked arms on each side and it's just the torso and instead of having a back it's got porcelain tiles all the way down as if it's a a centipede so it could lay forward so very similar to like a trilobite actually hey this one i hate this one sucks this one is not <laughs> this one sucks does not look happy no it looks angry note, note to self first encounter was not a ghost <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, that's good not a ghost and uh yeah it's not a ghost but that. it is some kind of insectoid creature that we will fight next episode because oh, our wait. party did not end and we hope your party doesn't end and we will see you all next week yeah. Oh, yeah. until next time bye Ooh. I'm scared The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.